We've been talking about living in the Spirit. And this week I heard again a uh, song that, well, I've heard a number of times, and I'm not even sure who sang it, and I'm not sure who wrote it. But the birds appealed uh, to me, and I looked them up. Hide me now under your wing. Cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know that you are God. Now the songwriter makes it clear there, when the thunder roars, I will soar with you above the storm. Well, that sometimes happens. And sometimes we're above the storm and we can see the difficulty. But sometimes, and some of you have known that you go through the storm. But the important thing is that God is still God. And God still wants us to be still and know that he hasn't deserted us. The wind is blowing, but still he's there. Last week, we said some of the results of being filled with the Spirit is, what, is that we should worship and adore God. We should be thankful in Christ for all things. And we should be submissive to God in everything. Well, we're not going to spend more time on uh, these three items this morning. But I want us to look at three more results of being filled with the Spirit. First of all, the Spirit-filled Christian is empowered for service. The person who is filled with the Spirit is empowered for service. Now the scripture reading we had this morning looked at Peter and he was filled and empowered. Courage, power was no problem. He was living the words that Jesus spoke in Acts 1 and 8 where Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. Where? Well, in the immediate area, and then it will go on into continuous circles, on into the world. Now, Jesus had told Peter and the disciples that this would happen when they received the Spirit, and when the Spirit filled their lives, and that's exactly what happened. But that wasn't just an isolated situation. That's a situation that's occurred many times. The same Spirit is still empowering people today. Now, the empowering will be different for different people. And I'm not here to say, well, it's going to happen this way, and the Spirit will fill you this way, and, and so on. No, no, not at all. But I will say that if we're filled with the Spirit, the determination will be the same. I don't think we can be filled with the Spirit and just say, okay, okay, I'm filled with the Spirit now, so I'll just adapt, take it easy, and, and, and that's the way it'll go on. A professional basketball player was asked, how can you be a Christian when you're playing such a physical game as basketball? And his response was that his life in the game, or outside the game, was going to be the same. So whether he was playing the game, or whether he was just living life outside the game, things would be the same. And he went on to say, when I'm playing the game, I'm aggressive, because I want to win. When I'm not playing the game, I'm aggressive, because I want to win souls for Christ. And I 
I think when we've got that determination, when that becomes our situation in life, when, when the Spirit fills us, God places that desire within so that just as we look at a hockey game or a basketball game and we see those guys going crazy and they're putting everything they got into it, that's exactly what God wants us to do. Now, we, we've got a lot of difficulty with that and I've heard people say, you know, we're, we're, we're all comparing to going to a hockey game and there's a few players down on the ice and they're giving it everything and the fans are up there sitting on their hands keeping you warm. And that's the image that some people got of the church, unfortunately. Because they look at it and say, well, who are the people that are really into the game? Who are the people that's really determined to stand for Christ? And many people are willing to say, Christian. Christian. I'm a Christian because, and then they go on with some reasons, are they being bold for Christ? Are they standing up trying to win souls for Christ? I believe that when the Spirit fills the Christian, that Christian becomes empowered for service. Let me go on. The Spirit-filled Christian is equipped for persecution, suffering, and sacrifice. Now most people, or many people, will associate the, the filling of the Spirit with some kind of pleasant or even a charismatic gathering. But the Bible doesn't teach that kind of thing too much. It, it, it teaches that we need to be equipped because guess what? There's going to come persecution. There's going to come suffering. There's going to come sacri sacrifices. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 8, here's a man, Stephen, filled with the Spirit. The word says, a man full of God's grace and power did great wonders, miraculous signs among the people. Isn't that wonderful? Stephen, an ordinary person, and what does he do? He does great wonders, miraculous signs among the people. He's being used by God. He's filled. He has been empowered. He's equipped. didn't read that last line there. Opposition arose. Just because he was filled with the Spirit did not mean that he was not going to have to stand and stand alone for Christ. Opposition came and most of you know quite well the story of Stephen. Because very soon, while he was bold and speaking, he was faced with the rocks coming at him. He was faced with the rocks coming at him. Opposition arose and, and you know, almost beyond our mind to comprehend that people would be there and they'd throw the rocks at him and he would be stoned. Stephen do? Lord, forgive them. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing, Lord. <laughs> forgive them. better roses for Stephen. No better roses. You see, this, this business of being filled with the Spirit does not 
by any means promise us a bed of roses. I, 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 I sometimes hear that and I, I think these people are just trying to bring confusion to the church. Because God never promised us anything like that. He promised that He would be there with us. He promised that He would strengthen us. Yes, the storms will come, but I will be there with you. Be still and know. Of course, what did Jesus do when he nailed to the cross? The Spirit was filling him for sure. And he does exactly the same thing. Father, forgive them. This week I went to the mail and I received this uh, poster of putting it on the board out there. And it simply says, Bells of Peace, a remembrance of those who served in the First World War. Ring bells for peace. November the 11th, at sunset, 4.31 p.m. So two weeks time, on November the 11th, what they're asking is the towns and the places where there are bells to be outside. And I suppose if you've got a bell in your home and you want to go outside and ring it, it tells us to ring the bell 100 times. Because it's been 100 years since that first World War ended. And just a way of remembering. Just think about it. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know many uh, people who went there. I guess I've heard many, many names. But people left this community and left all along the North Shore and all around the land in 19. 14, 15, 16, a hundred years ago. I talked to somebody this week and they, they were telling me that, I don't know who it was, way back there, uh, this particular individual uh, went teaching. And a great salary of $77 a month Now, this person wasn't 100 years old, and, and uh, it wasn't back in the uh, 1914, 15 range. When they left those communities, when they left here to, 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 to do this, when they left here to go overseas, uh, what a sacrifice. What a thought. I need to go over to foreign lands that I know nothing about, go through difficulties and struggles and, and probably never come back. And that's what happened to a lot of them. Leave their families because they wanted to protect. They wanted their children, their spouses, to have the right to be able to go and worship freely. To be able to walk around with freedom. And left them probably the very little flower left in the bin, if there was any. Left them with not much to survive them. These people had. Certainly, a burning desire that they would do what they could to hold out the freedom that was there. And we, as Christians, today, don't face what they faced, but we still need to remember that there may be, and I don't know what 
child sacrifices, and I don't know uh, what persecution or what suffering you go through, but there may be these things coming, and we need to be equipped for it. We need to have that reliance upon God. I've heard people say, you know, if somebody, I, I, I've been told actually, uh, since, since I've come to, to disappointment, you know, someone is sick. And my wife was the, <laughs> supposed to be the result of it. Well, how could you be sick and be a Christian? Be sick and, and rely upon the Lord. How can somebody be sick and, and, and die a horrible death and have pain and suffering and all that kind of thing? <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, we've got more people, and I, I don't I don't mean to belittle by any means, but sometimes and the thought comes to my mind, and I, 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 I you know, we've got more people who are into institutions, seeking help for their mind and, 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 and for what they are going through mentally. And God bless them for, for doing that. But we've got more people walking around with no sense whatsoever. Really, that's it. That's where they are. Because God, you know nothing about God. That's not really what it amounts to. God is not going to put us in a bubble and say, oh, here you are, you're lovely. You stay here. No. We have to be equipped because there may be persecution and there may be suffering and there may be sacrifices. Did you get any of the news yesterday? Down there in Pittsburgh? You know, imagine... That's the world we live in, folks. That's the world we live in. And, you know, it would be great to say, oh, well, you know, uh, we live in a different land. That wouldn't happen in a different land. Yeah, we used to say that too. But drugs one time too. But that didn't pan out very far. Folks, we need to recognize that our only hope is in being in being filled with the Spirit, being empowered by Him, being equipped with Him to face whatever comes. Because there's nothing going to come tomorrow that God doesn't know about today. God knows all about what the moral holds. He knows what, you know, what you're going to have for lunch today. Well, time's moving on. And I'll very quickly mention my third point there. Spiritual Christian is enabled to live Christ likeness. And this is a point that I've, I'm sure I've mentioned before, something similar at least. But we need to repeat it over and over. Because the Spirit comes, and He comes not to glorify Himself, but He comes to bring glory to Jesus. John 16, 15, Jesus said, The Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. The Spirit will fill the light and will reveal the Lordship of Christ. And that's the way it is. We, we, we're not going to be coming and saying, Well, we need to worship the Spirit today because the Spirit is this, that. The Spirit is simply showing us Jesus. We sing a little chorus. I don't know, I don't say it very often, but once in a while. I'm coming while the hand of God is on me. I'm coming while the Spirit fills my soul. I'm coming while the precious blood is flowing. That's where it starts, friends. While the precious blood is flowing. We've got no other argument, we've got no other plea. It's the blood of Christ. We need to recognize that we have to be willing to allow Him, first of all, to save us, to cleanse us, to give us a peace within. 
And then I surrender and let Jesus take control. The power of God can do it for you, for me, and for the use of weapon. We're going to sing the chorus to be like Jesus. Do is really your life. 